it's going. Okay. Um, this is Brandy from uh, Three Health, and today I'm here with um, Marlene Sexton. She's a psychotherapist, and we are going to have a little chat with Carol Freeman. And Carol, tell us about um, how you got involved in low carb and ketogenic diets and what you're doing. Yeah. Um, my name is Carol Freeman, and oh gosh, I've been passionate about psychology and nutrition for. I don't know, 20, 30 years probably, uh, probably goes all the way back to my first diet at 19 years old. And um, I um, have multiple degrees from Bastyr University. I did an undergrad in nutrition and then I did a double master's in nutrition and clinical health psychology. And that was uh, in my pursuit of trying to figure out how um, do we help people make long-term behavior change so that they can eat healthy diet in such a way that it would actually help them be uh, optimally healthy. So um, really passionate about uh, how nutrition affects the mind, but then also how the mind affects what we eat. And so getting that degree at Bastyr was my dream. And um, it's, you know, it was a fantastic degree. However, uh, I came out of school um, being trained in the health at every size model and uh, positive psychology, which is all great. Um, however, I had the belief that if we tried to put people on restricted diets, if we encouraged them to lose weight, we were actually doing more harm than we were good. Um, that because um, there was no way to actually lose weight and keep it off, it was just much better than to help people learn to love themselves the way that they were. And if we let go of all that diet mentality um, and accepted our bodies for what they were, then ultimately the belief was that people would make healthier choices and they would be able to eat mindfully and intuitively and just be at a healthier weight than they would if they tried to yo-yo diet and just keep gaining more weight. Um, so, so did you, you believe that or was that what you I, were taught? I did. I, I believe that. Um, I mean, uh, the health at every size model is, is based in research and uh, I'm sure you know from the work you've done that, that it is a pretty common pattern that people diet, they lose weight and then they regain even more. And I've since uh, put everything together that I've been studying for so long to realize that it's, it's not, it's, it's partially the dietary approach that most people take, but also then having the psychological support to be able to make long-term behavior change by addressing uh, where cravings come from, natural appetite regulation, but also just behavior change in general. So um, I came out of school having gained quite a bit of weight and, um, you know, was in denial or I was oblivious to the fact that I myself had metabolic syndrome uh, when I graduated with this and um, I thought I was healthy and uh, uh, it uh, I was practicing nutrition but you know I wasn't creating a lot of big change in people I mean they like the message of like just love yourselves the way you are and uh, let go of dieting but I wasn't creating a lot of uh, big changes in people's health um, so it took a horrible car accident, uh, 2014. Um, I was rear-ended by a distracted driver. It was a five car chain reaction pileup. Um, I suffered a, a brain injury and uh, crush injuries to my legs. I developed something called um, chronic regional pain syndrome in my legs, which meant that the pain and swelling were so severe that I ended up bedridden, as well as uh, the brain injury led to post-traumatic hypopituitarism, which basically just meant I had a symptom list a mile long and the doctors were really um, stumped as to how to help me. Um, out of sheer desperation just to not be stuck in bed the rest of my life, I just kept searching for an answer, like what can help heal my brain? Um, and I remembered in grad school that we learned about Mm, this much about a ketogenic diet for That's epilepsy. I was going to ask if yeah. it was ever even mentioned or taught to it, you guys at all. Yeah, it was mentioned and um, it was in reference to like, this is the diet that's used to treat epilepsy and that's about it. Okay. Um, we didn't learn anything about implementation or anything like that. Um, and so I just, you know, I reasoned that if it worked for epilepsy, which is something that's not quite right with the brain, um, perhaps it was something that was going to be able to help me um, heal my brain injury just so I could get out of bed. And um, it was remarkable because just within days of adopting it, the symptoms that had me bedridden uh, were resolving. Um, I had massive amounts of energy. The weight was just falling off. 
um, as well as the, uh, the chronic regional pain syndrome went into remission, which is something that is a progressive uh, degenerative uh, syndrome that happens where people just get worse and worse. And mine is in remission as long as I stay uh, compliant with, with a keto low carb diet. So um, yeah, so it was just, it was the final piece that I'd been missing in order to create the transformation that I'm so passionate about helping people uh, create. So and now so I work, I've been doing nothing but this for about the last three and a half years in my practice. It's all virtual. I work remotely with people all around the world. And um, I'm really passionate about integrating uh, a way of um, following keto that does address the psychology as well. So um, I've got a, um, a starter program that's a nine week comprehensive program. And then I work with people longer term um, as well once they've gone through that initial um, training program. Cool. So tell me a little bit about the metabolic syndrome and uh, your, how much weight did you lose and how did that go? Yeah. So metabolic syndrome uh, is, you know, there's five different criteria. And if you meet three of those, uh, that, that stamps you with that. Uh, um, it's not considered a disease, is it? It's more of a syndrome, right? Um, yeah, it's a constellation so, of things. Yeah. 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 So uh, um, low HDL, high triglycerides, uh, waist measurement for women 35 inches or greater, um, high blood pressure and uh, high blood glucose. Am I getting those right? Yeah. Um, and so I met the uh, low HDL um, um, and uh, waist measurement and then the high triglycerides. Um, my blood pressure was, was, um, was normal, independent. Actually, it was really high with a post-traumatic hypopituitarism. It skyrocketed, but... Um, and then my uh, blood sugar was always, we never tested like a A1C or anything like that. My, my blood sugar was still considered to be normal. So those are the three criteria I met. Um, so the first six months of following a ketogenic diet, I lost 60 pounds and 10 inches off my waist. And uh, so I no longer fit any of the criteria. Well, I think my, my, um, my HDL still struggles to be pretty low, but um, otherwise I didn't meet any of the criteria besides that one. Wow, that's an amazing amount of uh, weight loss and a big change in your metabolic situation. Um, I'd like to go back a little bit to the steer because I think you were telling me that you had helped um, change a little bit of what was going on there at the cafeteria and dietarily for the campus. Yeah, I mean, they have a great uh, cafeteria there where at the time when I was in school, it was a 100% vegetarian cafeteria. And it was really old school vegetarian, which was like, you know, rice and cheese was basically the, the, the foundation of most meals. So it was whole food based, but it was vegetarian. And getting into the curriculum for all the degrees that they have there, there was nobody promoting that vegetarianism was the healthiest way to eat. And so I saw that, uh, you know, um, disconnect there. And I was like, why does a cafeteria not align with actually what's being taught? Because, uh, you know, most students that came in as a vegetarian to the one of the nutrition programs, believing that it was the healthiest way, once they learned about things like B12 and how it's really hard to meet a lot of your mineral needs as a vegetarian, they were, they had a lot of uh, awakening to that. And a lot of them uh, during their course and training there, they were no longer vegetarian and started to incorporate some uh, animal proteins in there. And so, uh, you know, the naturopathic program also didn't promote the vegetarianism was the healthiest way to eat. And so I saw that, um, uh, you know, misalignment there. And so I formed a, um, a group on campus. I called it CHIP, uh, Cafeteria Holistic Improvement Pro Progr Project, I think is what we called it. And I just, um, I, I wanted to be, you know, a, a, a conduit to change and stuff. So there were groups that were just like, they would complain about it, but nobody was ever doing anything. And so um, I started um, some monthly meetings and we just started, you know, a dialogue and it turned out that part of it was that their head chef at that time uh, really believed in a vegetarian diet and he'd been there so long they didn't really want to rock the boat. Um, and so we um, opened that dialogue and then there was a new, um, uh, I don't know, a director of cafeteria services or something like that that came on board and then they started to incorporate um, some offerings that were animal protein based. Um, this was uh, it's been uh, seven years since I've graduated from there. I haven't been on campus in a while. I have no idea what what's currently what's being served on? there. So, but that's yeah. that's what happened during the time I was I was there for five years, getting 
all the degrees that I did. So. Okay, cool. So you said in your program, you incorporate um, both like the keto and inflammation and or implementation of keto. Do you ever do like different types of low carb or is it straight keto? Um, so my goal with the, so everyone starts out with a very similar approach to start with because the goal is to get them into ketosis as fast as possible um, and to minimize cravings um, and uh, facilitate behavior change as quick as possible. So um, uh, during the course of the nine weeks, I teach them several things so that each person and, and I'm with my guidance that we're finding uh, a way that keto low carb fits their lifestyle, their needs. Um, so I do start out everyone with a very similar approach, but it gets fine tuned along the way um, to you know find what works for them and what's going to be actually sustainable. So um, most most people, it, you know, I am working with a, a, a niche of people is primarily women that have dieted their entire lives and they already are sold on keto. They want to follow a ketogenic lifestyle, um, and everyone does get a, end up getting their own. Um, you know, not everyone needs to be a 20 grams of carbs or less per day for the rest of their lives. And that's part of the education and teaching that I teach them is let's figure out what actually works for you and what you need to do that's going to be sustainable. Because yeah, some people don't need to be strict forever. Um, some people can have, you know, all the health and, and um, sustainability from doing, you know, a lower carb approach. Um, and, uh, and, but finding that, you know, part of that too is just the psychology of where somebody is as well. Some people don't do well with, uh, the gray area. Um, for me, that's a, you know, slippery slope of like, well, little this and a little that little more, and then pretty soon I'm back to, you know, 300 grams of carbs a day. Um, so, you know, that, that's part of it as well as helping people figure out, um, you know, what fits with their personality and what is going to actually be sustainable for them. Um, some yeah. people do better with having black and white rules to follow than they do with like, ah, all foods fit, which is, you know, what I was doing before. So, right. Right. And then do people come to you on medications and things like that, that need looking after and monitoring as they're losing weight? Yeah. I mean, uh, some, yeah, sometimes people do, I know the ones to watch out for. And so I will, um, you know, work with their doctor or instruct them, you know, cause I'm sure you're familiar that there aren't necessarily a lot of doctors that are used to people being able to get off of their medications. And so, uh, I empower them with some words to, um, you know, work with their doctor. So I always tell them it's not within my scope of practice to tell you how to take your medication, how to stop taking it. Um, what I have seen is that for this medication you're on, this is something that we need to monitor very closely. Um, you need to go see your doctor first, let him know this and ask him or her um, what, what that looks like. When is it that you need to change that and how frequently that. So I, I have them work with their doctor, um, you know, so uh, certain diabetes medications, uh, blood pressure medications. Those are the primary ones that um, need immediate adjustments. Um, and um, if they are on any, you know, so that's part of the screening I do is to make sure, you know, what, what medications are you on? These are the ones that you're going to need to work with your doctor to um, monitor the dosing. Um, but that is, that is their doctor that, that does that. And again, not everybody's doctor is used to, uh, I've had plenty of them that, that their doctor says, well, no, you, you can't ever get off of this. And so I said, well, that's okay. So here's, here's how to approach that when they think that that's going to happen because it's normal. They're not used to seeing people actually get off of medication. So, um, that's, uh, that's, that's what I do with those. Good. Any pushback from primary cares about what you're doing or have you had patients go to their primary care with great results and then they end up telling them that it's dangerous and they mm -hmm. should hang it? <laughs> oh yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's, um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of, I've referred people to other doctors that, you know, their doctor freaks out about what they're doing, even though the labs and everything show how much better they're getting. Um, I'll find another, you know, keto friendly doctor and, and say, um, you know, like in the Seattle area here, we have Dr. Ted Naiman. So a lot of times I will refer people to go to him and he says, well, why, why do people need my stamp of approval? And I said, because their doctor tells them it's dangerous and bad. They just need another person in a white coat to tell them it's okay. And then they'll have peace of mind, right? So uh, they're, they're not going to believe me over their doctor 
uh, that's telling them this is dangerous. And so if I just have another doctor that can say, yeah, you're doing great, everything's healthy, then that will help them give, give them some peace of mind. Um, yeah, so there are, you know, there's a, a gamut, a continuum of the reactions of their physicians. Um, some of them are like, oh my gosh, wow, everything's better. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. That's, that's you know, that's, too. yeah. And then there are some also that have said, you should follow, they, you should follow keto. I don't know how to help you do that. And, and then, uh, so they're seeking out somebody to help direct and guide that for them. Um, then yes, there are the other ones that like, wow, your labs all got better, but, uh, you know, this is dangerous and it's going to kill your liver, you know, like all these myths and things like that. And so then they say, well, even though that got better, that you can't do that, that's not good. And so that's part of where, um, you know, I'll, you know, give them some books and videos and research presentations and things like that to help them understand that, um, that, yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of misunderstanding out there about keto and, and if doctors haven't actually implemented or seen a lot of their patients follow it and get those improvements, they, they uh, have beliefs and misconceptions about, um, you know, what is going to happen. It, it, even for me, when I first started it, I was um, seeing a, a naturopathic doctor and um, I em embarked on it on my own. And um, uh, so two weeks into uh, my keto diet, my inflammation marker, so my CRP dropped 62% just in two weeks. And my doctor that I was seeing at that time said, um, no, this, you, you can't follow a ketogenic diet long-term because it's inflammatory because you're eating all that red meat and bacon. Um, so this is not going to be, and I said, but my labs just showed that my inflammation dropped 62%. Why are, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but, <laughs> um, so, so thank you. I'll be seeing yeah, somebody else yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we should form like um, our own Washington State kind of low carb keto friendly directory. You know, yeah. that we can be listed on other more. Well, there's even international like Diet Doctor, mm -hmm. um, but I'm listed like on the Obesity Medicine Association <laughs> and. Um, low carb USA, obviously. Um, but we need something that's like more central to the area. I think mm -hmm. that would be nice. Yeah. Cause it's really hard. It's so disappointing when people get such good results. It's very undermining when they hear from their primary care that, you know, yeah, everything's getting better, but I don't want you to do it anymore. It just <laughs> so confusing. Right. Right. Everything so, got better. Yeah, and so I also noticed that you um, are trained in hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And do you do much of that, or how does that work with your practice? Yeah, I picked that certification up uh, in the middle of my grad school, and part of it was just due to so my um, my psychology degree. Basically, the 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 goal of that degree is to train me to be a uh, mental health counselor. Um, and, you know, to go on and do the advanced, you know, what is it like two or 3000 hours, supervised hours to be able to get that licensure. But, um, I, I never wanted to go that route. I just wanted to have the psychology. I wanted to have the counseling skills and knowledge to be able to just help people be able to make behavior change for, for diet focused, uh, you know, so health, healthful food changes. Um, and so I never, I knew I didn't want to go and pursue the licensure. I just wanted to have that training. And so about halfway through, uh, my coursework, I was just still baffled about like how, what are we learning that actually helps people make change, right? Because we were, you know, we're trained that you, you may take years of therapy and here's different approaches you could do. Um, and my own experience before that of, of attending counseling and therapy and always feeling like, you know, we go in and we talk about some really painful stuff and I leave after an hour just completely emotionally wrung out and crying and, and upset. And it was like, how is this helping? And I remember asking one of my professors at one time, like, so how exactly does psychotherapy, how does it help people make change? And he says, that's a really good question. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> so uh, I, uh, um, I, I, something popped up on Facebook where somebody was talking about doing a hypnotherapy training. And I thought, oh my gosh, this, this seems like a really good fit. It's another tool in my toolbox of being able to help people make change. So I did that training in one of the summers while I was in grad school and it, it's a 
special uh, hypnotherapy training specifically for people that have advanced psychology degrees. So it's not just a you know online program. It was actually an immersive um, six week program that we did with all you know either a licensed psychologist or um, they they let me into the program because I was I was co completing coursework in that and um, and so it was it's great because it's actually really aware of uh, you know the you know, things that we need to be mindful of when working with people on a deeper level of psychology. Um, so I picked that up as like, okay, this is what's going to help people be able to make change. Um, I do really like um, the hypnosis because it's a way of helping people make real, you know, deep work. But at the end of the session, you can actually, you know, suggest, you know, you're going to wake up and you're going to feel happy and content and complete and closed. And so people wake up feeling or, you know, they come out of a session feeling really positive and, and instead of like in tears and crying, like uh, sometimes ther therapy can be when you're feeling, uh, when you're working on some really deep stuff. Um, and so in the beginning, before I had my keto tool, um, I was doing one-on-one um, -on -one hypnosis in a clinic. And so I was working in, uh, my original business name was Hypnotic Nutrition, and I did hypnosis for nutrition. And it was frustrating for me actually because um, people came to me wanting to lose weight and I was still of the orientation that that was a bad thing, that we shouldn't have a goal of trying to lose weight. And so it was frustrating because that's what people wanted to pay for, but it didn't align with what my beliefs were at that time. Um, and it, 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 you know, hypnosis all by itself is not a magic wand. So people had this idea that if I just get hypnotized, I'll lose the weight and I don't have to make any other changes. And it, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. And so that also wasn't all by itself was not the magic wand. Um, so, you know, the training I've had in hypnosis and the, you know, the way that the brain works at a subconscious level um, does have influence over my approach and uh, the psychology thing. So I'm not doing occasionally I will do um, some one-on-one -on -one sessions with some of my VIP clients um, but it's not a primary thing that I'm doing actively week in and week out with people. Um, but it does have a big influence on um, how, you know, what I do um, teach my clients um, and the approach that I do have, a lot of it has to do with, you know, the subconscious motives of the brain and how we can influence um, behavior change at a subconscious level beyond um, our awareness. Yeah, cool. Um, do you ever get any clients that you think you're doing good work with them and they're on keto, but they just don't seem to be getting the results that you would expect and think that they could use medication to help with things like appetite or cravings? I haven't had anyone that has been in that boat at all. Um, um, all the people that I've worked with when they're, when they're following the program and the outline that I have, all, all have fantastic results. Um, so I don't know. Um, uh, and, and I'm sure, you know, I've not worked with everyone in the world. So um, there are, um, you know, I tend to work with women that are somewhere between, you know, 50 to 100 pounds overweight. Um, I think that there may be um, probably people that are more than 100 pounds overweight. I'm going to guess probably are ones that would do well with some kind of appetite regulation um, medication. I don't know if that's what you've seen or not, but um, I, uh, I, I, I've, you know, I tend to work with people then again, or that are in that 50 to hundred pounds overweight. And I think people that are of a higher weight have a different, um, you know, brain chemistry, different um, food addiction um, going on that, that probably could benefit from that. But that's not been, um, you know, my experience or at least the people that I've worked with. Okay. Um, good. And so your program is how long? Well, the program that I have currently is an, the initial one is nine weeks, but we're getting where I'm working on a complete revision of that. Um, so probably coming out in the next couple of months, it will be um, like a six week um, starter program and then a long term support, you know, a, a year at a time after that. So um, that's, that's likely what the change is going to be. So because I found that um, the, the training that I have that's nine weeks right now, um, people get through about four weeks of the material and then that gets them going. And then there a lot of them, the feedback is like, wow, I haven't finished the other modules yet. So 
uh, but I've got, you know, what I've got already has been so great and helped me get, get started with this. So it may, may be that we do like a, a four to six week starter program and then we have like an advanced uh, program that follows that for more long-term stuff. Um, I'm in the process of revising all of that currently, so. Okay, and then uh, I met you through the Keto Meetup group, right? So tell us about how that started and what it is and who's involved and who's welcome. Yeah, so uh, in the Seattle area, we do have a Keto Meetup group. We've uh, gotten better at having a monthly uh, meeting and um, I mean, I started it more than a year ago, but it just never really got a lot of traction. Um, it was interesting because we had quite a few group members in our Facebook group, but when it came to actually meeting up, even though the group is about meeting up, it was always the, you know, hard to get people to actually come out. I don't know why that is. Uh, but after um, Low Carb USA that we've had in Seattle in May of 2019, we actually had a, a group of people that were much more interested in having regular uh, meetings. And so we've done what, three of them now. And uh, it's open to the public. We'd love to have, you know, any, anyone that's interested in low carb following it or just learning more um, practitioners as well. We've got uh, psychologists and nurse practitioners uh, and um, well, myself, certified keto nutrition specialist. Um, yeah. So any, anyone is welcome. And um, the best way uh, to get that if you want to join our Facebook group, I can we can put some links below, right? I'll send you those information. Um, or we've also got an email list for people um, that we send out information about those meetups too. Cool. Well, yeah. it's awesome to meet another passionate keto practitioner out there. Uh, we need to multiply ourselves, I think, by a lot <laughs> to help people. But um, we're doing good work. And yeah. you're doing good work. Appreciate it. Um, where can people find you and get to know more about your program and what you're doing? Um, all over social media and the internet. You can find me as Keto Carol. Carol has an E on the end. Uh, it's the fancy French spelling of Carol. Uh, so Keto Carol, if you, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and my website is ketocarol.com. And um, that's, uh, that's how anybody can find me out there. And YouTube, right? Oh yes, YouTube. Uh, yeah, my YouTube series is Keto Chat. And so if you search for Keto Chat, you'll see I've been doing that series for over three, about three years now. I don't know, we've got maybe 120 episodes. Um, cool. Yeah. Good job. Well, I appreciate you being on and uh, sharing your experience. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to know you and yeah, we need to band together and multiply the, the good that's happening from this. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. Um, I appreciate your time. Have a good one. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye.